Chag Sameach, everyone. Happy Purim. Woo! Okay. It is 11.33. It's a good time for us to start. Thank you all for getting here on time and for coming up. And at some point when you leave, later, 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 if you'd like to admire the visual Megillot that we made in the morning, they're all um, affixed to this temporary wall that we have between our sanctuary and our what will be new social hall. We, um, here's, the, here's the road map for the morning so you know what to expect, okay? The first thing that's going to happen is going to be these awesome Barnard tempos. They're going to lead us in a little bit of Purim singing. And the insert in your program has the words for those, so you can join with them. We want everyone to sing together. Then we're going to do a very short Megillah reading, actually in Hebrew this year, not in English, so you'll listen. And then we're going to do the spiel, okay? Great. Now, what are these guys called? Groggers, okay. So here, we are going to have a dedicated grogger moment. This is not it. Okay. We're going to have a dedicated grogger moment when we do the Megillah reading. I'll explain that when we get there. If you could try to not grogger your groggers while the kids are singing, and then we're actually going to put our groggers under our chairs when we're all done for the spiel, because that's not a grogger moment either. So hang on to them. You'll need them in a couple of minutes. And for now, we're going to sing with our Barnard Tempo. Jacob, will you move these stands for us to the back there? Because you're on the crew of, just move them behind into the organ pit. Thank you. Go that way behind Janet. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to use the purple one because it has the blessing in it, actually.
So I have one piece of housekeeping. If, you are, if there's like empty seats between you and anybody else, please fill them in because we have lots of people who are still coming in and who are looking for seats. So it would be really great if you could help us welcome people and move into the middle so that people who come in can sit on the ends. I know that's not your favorite, but I don't care that much right now. Okay. And also, if lots more people come, shh, if lots more people come and we need lots more seats, then we're gonna invite our small people to come sit on the floor. But I don't think we need to do that quite yet, but Rebecca, Rita, if you see, and there's kids, they can just, you know, okay. So this is a super fun holiday, and we have mics that work, but they only work if you're not talking. It's actually not so loud that I can talk over you. So thank you. So you hear the groggers, right? We're going to have this is a grogger portion, and then parents, I'm going to need you to take your groggers from the kids if you think they can't manage them alone. Thank you. Okay. So uh, like most Jewish holidays, shh, not a grogger moment, like most Jewish holidays, there's a sacred text that we read, and that's where the story is. Anybody know what this one's called? The Megillah. Well, which Megillah? Uh, Megillah just means scroll. So how about I'm going to help you? Megi Lot? Esther. Esther. Excellent. So um, Megi Lot Esther can be, is written like, there, actually there's three different versions here, and if we had lots of time, we could show you them all. We're going to read from one of them. The one in the, in the silver tube is actually written on parchment. It looks just like the text of a Torah, right? It's the same way it's written. But this one we're going to use because it has the blessings before and because it has some like pictures, so it's a little prettier to read. Yep, that looks like a Torah scroll, right? That's written on parchment just like the scroll. This one's just printed, but it has some prettiness on it. The, the trope, which is the name for the way we sing it, the tune for Esther is different than the tune for any other of the sacred texts. And what I'm going to do in a moment is I am going to um, chant the blessings. I'm going to chant only the first three verses, just so you can hear it. And then I'm going to fast forward a little bit to the story, to the part where you're going to get to use those groggers. Okay, so we're only going to make noise this year for one person's name. What person is that? Okay. And then what do we do when you hear the word? It's going to sound like Haman. What do we do when we hear Haman? All right. And then you're going to, right? Not forever, because I'm going to have to keep going with the story. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'll have a couple of things to say. So I would love of Costa, do you mind coming to help us up here? Because you look like a great volunteer. Can you just take this and unroll it a bit? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Let's hear it for Costa. Great, thank you. Um, that's open enough, but it's, it's, I'm, I have what I need here. So we say blessings before we read sacred text. The melody for this blessing sounds like, I could ask you, but it's very obscure, it's the same melody as the blessing we use before we hear the shofar, actually, on the high holidays. So if it sounds familiar and you're wondering where it's from, sorry, that's where it's from. Okay. Can you take one step this way? That wasn't nice but appropriate for today. Okay. And after I say each blessing, what can you say? Amen. Great. You're all ready. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu al mikra ha-megilah Amen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Sheasa nisim la avotenu ve imotenu, bayamim hahem basman hazeh. Extra credit. Anybody recognize that blessing? Where is it from? Ezra. Not before Torah, but good guess. Jack. Hanukkah. Beautiful. We'll talk more about that later. Different melody. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Shehechianu v'kiyamanu v'higiyanu l'asman hazeh. V'yihi b'yimei achashverosh, u'achashverosh, amolech mehodu v'ad kush, sheva v'esrimu mea medina, Bayamim hahem keshevet hamelech achashverosh al 
ki se malchuto, asher beshushan habira, bishnat shalosh le malko, asamishte le chosera ve avadav, chel paras umadai, ha partamim, vesare ha medinot le fanam. So what I just sang is, I'm not going to do it here, but we're in Shushan, Achashverosh is the king. And now we're going to fast forward in the story, which if you just studied with us, you'll know comes to be the place where um, Mordechai is not going to want to bow down to you know who. Let's practice it now, Haman. All right, and then we're going to, right? You're going to have to cut them off. All right. You have to do a little emphatic quick grogger, and then we're going to, you know, end it. But if you're not listening, you won't know when to do it. Achar hadivarim ha'ele. Is this the right one? Nope, this is a different achar hadivarim ha'ele. Here, this one, which means after these things happened. It happens a lot in these stories. Achar hadivarim ha'ele, gidol ha'melech achashverosh et haman ben hamdata ha'agagi va'inasehu Vayasem et kiso me al kol hasarim asher ito, vechol avde hamelech asher beshaar hamelech, korim umishtachavim lehaman. Ki chen sivalo hamelech, umordechai lo yikra velo yishtachave, vayomru avde hamelech asher beshaar hamelech lemordechai. Madua ata over et mitzvot ha melech, vayhi ke amram elav, yom ve yom ve lo shama alehem, vayigdilu lehaman, lir ot shvaya amdu, divre mordechai, ki higid lahem, asher hu yehudi, vayar haman, Ki ein Mordechai korea umishtachave lo. Vayimale haman chema. Vayivez be'inav lishloach yad b'mordechai levado. Ki higi, sorry, ki higi dulo et am Mordechai. Vayivakesh haman lehashmid et kol ha-Yehudim asher bechol malchut achash ve'rosh am Mordechai. Bechodesh Harishon, who Chodesh Nisan, Bishnat, Shem Esre, Lamelech Achash Verosh, he peeled poor, who Hagoral, if I leave Ne Haman, Miyom Leyom, Ume Chodesh Le Chodesh, Shenem Asar, who Chodesh Adar. Okay, so I just told this key part of the story, you can roll it up, thank you and if our cast would come find their spots on the bima. And I want to say one word, which is for everybody, but especially for grown-ups and older kids, maybe. Cast, you're welcome to please take your places. If you're in the back and you can't hear me, I think Rabbi Scheffler's on that. Okay, great. So there are lots of folks out there, us included, talking about what it feels like to be silly and celebrate this kind of a holiday at a time when there's, we're dealing with a lot of anti-Semitism and a war and a lot of things that are really challenging for us. And this farcical story of Purim is set in a time where the people surely also had surus oh boy. and worry, right? And essentially, this is an opportunity for us to also laugh, right? To also have fun. Not to say the other stuff isn't here, but it's the rabbis giving us permission to take a breath and to have a little fun and to note our blessings and the things that are great in our life. The other stuff is going to be there tomorrow, right? It doesn't go away. But it's okay also to have fun during Purim. It's okay to have blessings along with worry and then to be able to return to that with a full heart. So if you're feeling uncomfortable about Purim this year, if you're not sure what it feels like to be here, I hope that gives you permission and you know a, a community to join with so that we can do this together. Okay. I know. Thank you. The 
he, uh, I'm going to just do a couple. You're great, Janet. Thank you. If you'd like to know a little bit more about who's who here, your playbill explains that, including telling you in advance already so you can wow throughout that this amazing human at the piano, Janet Montroy, is the brilliant writer of all of the, um, the script and all of the lyrics. This is a fully original spiel this year. Um, and the final song, as always, the words are here. So when we get there, you'll know. We want you to join with us, and I'll remind you then, too. OK, groggers. No groggers. Right? Now we're going to just watch a show. So parents, you have to, I'm asking you to, like, you know, notice your children. And children, you can just stick them under your chairs. You can have them. They're yours. Or you'll return them, whatever. OK. Did I forget anything? It's hard to know. It's for him. It's going to be fine. Are your mics back on? Are your mics back on? Excellent. Okay. Also, we are recording this on the live stream, so you know you don't need to. If you want to just enjoy, I don't need that there for sure. Okay. So yeah, my wig is just uh, having a moment. Thank you, thank you all for coming on such short notice to this meeting of Squish, Sister Queens United in Seeking Help. Though we come from different generations, we have lived similar lives, yeah. And we have all received the guidance and support from the collective wisdom of this group tonight, or let's say this morning, we have two new queens who come asking for our help, and I know they will find it here. So let's start by introducing ourselves. I'm Dr. Barbie, the founder of this support group. I received my medical bag and stethoscope in 1973, shortly before becoming Miss America, <laughs> winning the Olympic gold medal in skiing. <laughs> I've had a long and varied career, and many would say I've had an enviable life as Barbie, yet I've always felt, I don't know, hollow inside. There was something artificial about my life, no substance, no core, plastic, you might say. Then in the last year, some truly remarkable experiences changed me, and I wanted to share my story with others so they too could learn and grow. Snow White, would you start us off this morning? Sure. My name is Snow White, and my experience has taught me how small some men can be. I was stuck home all day doing laundry and cooking. I can't get this whistling out of my head. And I like nature, but you know you're in a bad way when you start talking to the birds. I'm Cinderella, and I'm glad there's room for me here. The people who try to push me down were women. Sometimes we're not too nice to each other. I had a stepmother and stepsisters who tried to push me down, but I persevered, and I found a perfect fit. <laughs> My name is Ariel. Parents can be tough. My parents weren't supportive of my interests and kept trying to make my world smaller and damper. Just because they were perfectly happy with fish didn't mean I was. Well, you think that's bad. Try having a sultan for a father and a harem for a home. I tried to fly away from everything but got dragged back. Oh, I'm Jasmine, by the way. Yes, it's all about control and domination. I was locked away in a tower and had no access to basic grooming services for months at a time. <laughs> Talk about a hair-raising experience. <laughs> oh, and my name's Rapunzel. I'm Elsa, and sometimes we're all worst enemies. Sometimes we're so afraid of our own potential then we build ourselves ice palaces and freeze everyone else out. For too long, the warmest relationships I had were a reindeer and a snowman. 
My name is Belle, and I had a beastly experience in my home village. Nobody thought, everybody thought that they knew what was best for me, and nobody, nobody paid any attention to who I really wanted. I had to find my own truth, and that ultimately led to my happiness. Thank you so much, everyone. And now, before we get on with the meeting, if you would please let us rise so we can sing the Squish song. our two newest members from the Persian king of Shushan, Queen Vashti and Queen Esther. They have recently lived through a series of challenging events. Vashti, could you please start by giving us some background? Thank you, Dr. Barbie. I have to say that my life was pretty good for a long time. My husband, King Ahasuerus, well, he wasn't the sharpest scimitar in the armory, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But he wasn't a bad sort. He always was generous because he liked to see me looking good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm. Well, we got along pretty well until one day he crossed the line. There's some things you just can't unhear, you know what I'm saying? Sure do, sister. <laughs> Wait. What? I'm a little confused. Vashti, maybe it would help if you could show us what happened with a little role play. Oh. Rapunzel, would you play the part of the king? Oh, sure. <laughs> well, my dear, I think it's time for us to have a party. Sure, king. I love to entertain. Who are we inviting? The royal ministers and their wives, well, they're a dull bunch. But I can make some, make nice to the wives for a couple of hours. Not exactly. I have a new group of friends in mind, and uh, they're all dudes. Dudes? Well, that presents a few challenges. But I can order a few extra cases of beer and tell the chef to prepare nachos. Yeah. That always goes down well. Oh. And I'll tell the cleaning staff that there might be some overtime needed. Whatever you think is best, dear. Okay, uh, great, but awesome. I actually had something else in mind something for else? for you. For me? Yeah, I'd like to show you off a bit okay. by having you be the special entertainment. Oh, King, that is so sweet of you. What would you like me to do? My flower arranging demonstrations are known throughout the kingdom. Or how I how about I show the pictures from my trip to Nineveh? I had a whale of a good time. Ooh, I better get a new leather jacket for the party. Oh, I, I actually thought that you could do a little dance for dance us. Of, yeah, okay. and I wouldn't worry too much about a new leather jacket mm. or anything, anything if you catch my drift. What? Less is more, what? as they say. Oh. Typical. Ew, he said that. No imagination or too much imagination. Mm -hmm. Vashti, you must have felt terrible. I did. But luckily, I had someone to call on for advice. I got in touch with Ariel here. We got to know each other last year when I was vacationing on the Persian Gulf. She gave me some really good advice. Ariel, come on down here and tell us what you said. Okay. <laughs> 
The pasture is the way screener for some of the men out there. You'd think from their bad demeanor that vows were just pure hot air. One day he's all darling sweetheart, I can't live without your love. But if you're not careful or smart, he'll give you a great big shove. Just walk away, do it today. Here's my advice, I won't tell you twice, you don't have to stay. If you're not getting what you need, I think that we are all agreed. Be a go-getter, you can do better, just walk away. You might find you like canoeing, you might want to make a pie. You might want to start home brewing. There's plenty of things to try. There's so much in life to savor. You can be a group of one. So go do yourself a favor. Get out there and have some fun. Be your own fan. Really, you can. Life is exciting when you're rewriting an out of date plan. Old is new again. I think we all can say amen. Life can be great and not second great. It's time you began. Life can be great and not second great. It's time you began. You said it, sister. Sometimes we all need to move on with our lives. Very true, Belle. And a little encouragement from someone who has lived through disappointment can make all the difference in a person's life. Does anyone here have words for someone who was, had recently had an unexpected setback? Hmm. I do, Dr. Barbie. Great. This is for my friend Greta who was unexpectedly snubbed recently. <laughs> and sometimes you think you're winning a prize that you well deserve. But watch out, cause faith is grinning and growing a big old curve. But don't waste your time in crying, cause everyone knows who's best. Reviews can be mystifying. So no need to be depressed. Keep making art, making with heart. Brand new creations will bring nominations that won't fall apart. And the Academy will see how great a woman's work can be. They will want more because they will adore a film that is smart. Don't be dejected if you're neglected. Don't be if you're rejected, you'll be selected, errors corrected, it's only the start. So Vashti, did you follow your own advice? Well, that's exactly what I did. I grabbed my suitcase and I walked right through the palace gates. You go, girl. And what are you doing now? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm currently enrolled in an MBA program at the University of Babylon. And I'm also singing with an a cappella group, the Urtones. Maybe you've heard our latest EP, Summertime, and the living is Xerxes. Mm, no. No? Uh, well, thank you, Vashti. I know we are all moved by your journey of growth and self-actualization. Esther, would you be willing to pick up the story from here? Oh, of course. Well, the first I heard of any of this was when my uncle Mordecai came to speak to me. My uncle's just the best guy ever. <laughs> he's smart and he's kind and devoted not just to his family, but to his religion. We are Jews, you see. And we have our own laws and customs, but we're also good citizens and loyal to the king. Well, anyway, 
Uncle Mordecai told me that the king was looking for a new wife and he wanted all the unmarried girls in the kingdom to come to the palace so he could see them. Well, he told me I should go. I mean, that I could be the new queen. I thought he was crazy. Mordecai gave me some good advice that convinced me. Uh, sister, Queens, tell it to me. Wash your face, comb your hair, find some clothes you like to wear. Go on over to the palace, there's a pageant happening there. Lots of girls, short and tall, they are standing wall to wall. Don't be hesitant or fearful. Lift your head up and be cheerful. You are strong, you are smart, and you have a loving heart. All the other girls will vanish from the scene. When you come into view, the king will say to you, be my queen, be my queen, be my queen. So I took his advice, being queen, it sounded nice. When the king observed your beauty, didn't need to ask him twice. What will change in your life to become a royal wife? You could say that it was fated, so I never hesitated. I was just newly wed with a crown upon my head. When I realized what this new life could mean, and though your job was new, what to do. Be the queen, be the queen, be the queen. Squishies, tushies. 
I'm happy to hear about your Uncle Mordechai and his successful plan, Esther. Sounds like a fairy tale ending. Well, well. not exactly. <laughs> no. The plot always thickens. Mm. There were two problems, one for the king and one for all the Jews. But guess who had to solve both of them? Me, that's who. You're right. Uncle Mordecai was so proud that I was queen, and he came to the palace to see how I was doing. While he was there, he overheard two of the king's guards who had a grudge talk about how they were going to kill the king. He told me to tell the king. I did. Of course, I was giving Uncle Mordecai the credit. Anyway, uh, the plot was foiled. But there was a bigger problem ahead for the Jews. Uh -oh. The king had this new advisor named Haman. <gasps> he was a real no good Nick. He hated the Jews and was stealing their property, and he was passing laws discriminating against them. Squish, it sounds like we need to talk about Haman. Oh, oh. Okay. Fourth wall. Ixnay on the grogger's nay. Thank you. We don't talk about Haman. No, no, no. We don't talk about Haman. No, no. play here again, actually. So, Snow White, you have some experience with evil intentions. I'd like you to play the part of Haman. And Ariel, would you take the role of good old Uncle Mordecai, please? That's a great idea. Mm. Hey, you! Who do you think you are? And more important, who do you think I am? The answer to your question is, I am Mordecai the Jew, and I don't know who you are. What? What? I am Haman, the king's loyal and most trusted advisor, and you are nobody. And since you are nobody, you need to bow down to me. Well, I'm sorry, I can't do that. A Jew only bows to God. 
Never mind this so-called God of yours. Bow to me. Bow to me. No. Bow. Never. Okay, stop. Stop. Thank you. Yeah, clearly, Haman is dealing with some unresolved feelings of inadequacy. So now I think we'll jump ahead a little bit in the narrative. Elsa, would you play the part of the king and Cinderella sure. in a moment when it's time, if you would be ready also to play the part of Haman? I can't sleep. I've had a warm drink, I've counted sheep, I put on the white noise machine, and I spray lavender oil on my pillowcase, and nothing has worked. I know. I'll read a book. That should put me to sleep. I know just the book. The big book of King the Adventures. Let's see. On Tuesday, April 12th, the king rode out in the little field next to the castle and then came back. Friday, June 16th, the king spoke to the royal tailor about letting out the waistband of his second best pants. Wednesday, September 18th, the king had mushroom soup for lunch. I am feeling sleepy at last. Just one more entry should do it. <gasps> but wait, what is this? Saturday, November 24th, the king was saved from assassination attacked by the quick wits and brave actions of Mordechai the Jew. I can't believe I missed this. There almost was a crime. But thanks for Mordechai the Jew, sincere and true, the plot was well in time. I need a way to thank him, our rich reward. I know the best thing to do. Oh, go get help from him, man. I'm sure I'll have ideas. What to do? Haman, get in here. Yes, your majesty. What would you say is the best way to reward someone who has done a great service to the king, who has gone out of his way to further the king's interests, who has put his king before himself, who has shown the highest degree of selfless devotion? Well, your majesty, such a man should be given a great reward. He should be given a gold ring, fine suit of clothes, and a beautiful horse. Let it be so. Let all these things be done for Mordecai the Jew. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Mordecai the Jew? How can this be? The Jews keep getting in my way. I'm going to get rid of their interference once and for all. Ooh, thank you. Haman's ego has taken a big bruising here, and we can expect him to lash out in even more unhinged ways. And he did. On the 13th of Adar, he issued a proclamation that said all of the Jews should be killed <gasps> and their possessions confiscated. Boy, some people have really thin skin. Esther, would you continue with our story? Oh, well, well it was obvious what, what I needed to do. I needed to let the king know that Haman was planning even more bad things for the Jews of Shushan. And those bad things hurt me too. Because, because I am a Jew! Yeah. But there was a problem. I couldn't just go to the king and tell him this because there were very strict rules about how you could approach the king. So what did you do? Oh, I decided to plan a 
fabulous dinner and serve all the king's favorite foods. Then hopefully he'd be so relaxed and happy that I could tell him about Haman's nasty plans. So what did you make? I have this great recipe for baba ganoush. It's always a hit. I hope you didn't make anything with apples. I've really gone off of them. Seaweed is not only a beautiful color, it's full of minerals that are important for good health. Okay, be queens, please. Please, queens, let's return to the subject at hand, which, as you'll remember, is Esther. So, Esther, what happened next? All right, so this is how I handled it. Tell us what's about. I'm going to tell it to you in song. My family has been here for many years But now a certain someone wants us all gone Doesn't care about our pleading or our tears He says the Jews of Shushan are disloyal He's saying things he knows aren't really true Laws like he's the one who's royal, only wants to make you hurt if you're a Jew. I'm the person running roughshod over all the law. Is Haman, who is quite well known to you, but the sacred living in my heart means there's a flaw. What he doesn't know is that I am a Jew. So even though I'm living in the palace, there is an evil that I can't ignore. Please help us and stop Haman and his malice. Let us live our lives in peace forevermore. Stay strong and be confident now. If you keep your faith, you'll succeed somehow. And the king will see the falseness in what Haman said. The truth will be there. the king not change his mind. So what happened then? I can tell you. The king was horrified that this has happened, and he ordered that Haman be put in jail. Oh, yes, good. All the property and gold that had been taken from the Jews was returned to them, and King Ahasuerus and Esther lived happily ever after. Aww. So queens, so queens, what have we learned from this session of Squish today? That you need to work hard to improve whatever world you live in. That loyalty is very important. That you shouldn't est underestimate the power of a good meal with friends. That we shouldn't be afraid to accept new challenges. That Esther, is the true queen of Shushan. That it's important to stay true to what you believe in. 
that women can be brave, loyal, and steadfast. Oh, and so can men. That you need to have faith in the power of good while still working really hard to overcome the power of evil. Dr. Barbie, what do you think we should take away from this session? Yeah, oh, Dr. well, Barbie. I think everything that you just said, plus sometimes the best thing you can do is have a dance party. Oh! Oh! Hi, Queens. Hi, Hi Dr. Dr. Barbie. Want to sing a song? Sure, Dr. Barbie. Let's go. Hey, man, is no more. The king showed him the door. Stop his lying. Satisfying. Truth will always win. And good times will begin. Happy Purim, everyone! Happy Purim, 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 happy Pur